Um, all right, so we're going to talk about, we're going to go into um, the next step um, in our um, DBQ stuff. We're going to start looking at our uh, bucketing and things like that. So we, in last class period, um, you all read your essay. Yes, read your essay, background essay, read the background essay. Yes. Yes, Ms. Cox, we read our background essay and answered our questions. Yeah, y'all, y'all just staring at me like I, I like I don't know if you're here or there or, or where you at. Are y'all are y'all with me today? Hello, hi, hi, everybody here. Okay, it's Friday. You about to get two days off? <laughs> My, 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 nothing's working today, Ms. Pierce. Nothing's working. I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> Guys, we don't have people talk to us. We're goofy enough as it is, but we're a lot more fun and informative when we have people participating and chatting with us. Oh, I have some, someone tell me her dog is going insane. I have that problem sometimes too. Amen to that. I got a Pomeranian that thinks she's the end all be all. Yes. If I was at home, I'm telling you guys, if I ever have to work from home, if I ever get quarantined and have to work from home, my dog will be all over me. I have a basset hound who will not get out of my face. I have a mastiff that thinks that she's a lap dog. She's a hundred pounds and she thinks she's a lap dog and she literally sits on my face. It is insane. And then if the mastiff sit on top of me, then the basset who is 40 pounds thinks that she gets jealous. And so can you imagine hundred pound dog and a 40 pound dog trying to all be on my lap at the same time. That's fun. So yeah, that's interesting. Like a great time. Love it. My, my son has pictures of it. It is definitely interesting. So anywho, but yeah, so I understand the whole dog going crazy thing. Anyway, so you all um, should have answered the background questions, which I see six of you did. Six of you did a beagle and a German shepherd. I could only, yep, that sounds about right. Same problem, uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> so, um, so y'all should have answered the background questions for things fall apart. Only six of you did. Okay, so I always brag on my freshmen saying you guys are the best about turning homework. All right, six out of seven, six, I got six people and 17 people have not. That's, guys, you're losing bragging rights here. Don't do that, okay? I want, I want. We, we, we depend on you to motivate those upperclassmen. Don't give up. Be better than them. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> this is what it is. <laughs> I just kind of saw Sean poking his head around the corner right there. He's like, hmm. So, uh, but um, yes, we definitely, guys, get that stuff turned in. Get that stuff turned in. All right. Um, oh, only three of you turned in understanding the task. Three of you. Oh, guys, what's happening to my freshmen? What is happening? All right, guys. So do you all need some help? Are we struggling or are we, are we, is it the home, are we just struggling with homework right now? Are we struggling with understanding or is it just homework in general? Talk to me, talk to me now. Guys, this, this is like just a time for you to be honest and be like, I tried the homework, I don't get it, can you meet with me? Like, this is what we're asking for. If you're behind and you're like, it's on my weekend plan, that'd be a good thing for us to know too. Like, we just wanna know where you're at so we can help you in whatever way we can. Okay, so for those of you that are stating homework in the chat, does that mean homework as in like, you're planning on doing it this weekend? Homework or yes, okay, yes. Says yes. Okay. Oh, nice. Good. Okay. Um. All right. So when I when people are saying they're doing okay, so homework. If you if you are struggling and having trouble, please let me know because no one is telling me that they're having trouble. So. They're just saying homework. So I'm assuming homework means that you guys are bogged down a little bit. That's fine. Just try to get caught up over the weekend. If you're having trouble, let me know. Okay, please let me know. All right. 
we're going to go ahead and move on because we've got to keep moving um, so that we can uh, make sure that we've got things going on. So the next step in our in this process is that we have to do our document analysis. Do you guys remember this from last time when we did the outsiders, right? We did our document analysis. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, the let's when we do our document analysis, let's do the first one together. And if you guys will go to classroom, um, it is on. It is now on your classroom page because I have now posted everything. Okay. So you're gonna do it. Some people are gonna do it today. Okay. All right, that's fine. Just try to make sure that you know, I don't want you all to get too far behind. Um, remember those emails to parents go out on Fridays. So I always tell, you know, say like what's, you know, what's missing and all that good stuff. All right. So, so if you are behind on grades, make sure you get that stuff turned in. All right. So and usually when I say something's due today, it means like by class time. Okay, that's just FYI. <laughs> so, um, all right. So let's, you guys know to open this with Doc Hub. You guys can type into it with Doc Hub. Those of you who are turning things in with Doc Hub, because some of these we can't, I cannot convert these to a, a Google Doc. It just doesn't work. So when you need to open them with Doc Hub, don't send me a link. Make sure that you're saving it as another file and you're uploading the file into the Google uh, Classroom as a file, not as a link. I can't see it as a link. Okay, so um, now let's let's do our document A together. Okay. As we go through. All right. So, okay. So let's see the story note. So the document A is an offense on land. Okay. That's the name of document A. Okay. So they were returning home with baskets of yam from a distant farm across the stream when they heard the voice of an infant crying in the thick forest. A sudden hush had fallen on the women who had been talking and they had quickened their steps. Um, Woya had heard, twin, had, had heard that twins were put in earthenware pots and thrown away in the forest, but he had never yet come across them. Okay, that was from chapter seven. All right. So, um, and then a story note for this next uh, segment. After, um, uh, I cannot, I'm gonna butcher this one. I'll go, I couldn't, um, oh, oh, con, oh, I can't say it. Okan oh, Crow um, is exiled. His friend, oh, oh, be, uh, I can't say these words, uh, reflects on the same tribal practice. Birika was a man who thought about things. He remembered his wife's twin children, whom he had thrown away. What crime had they committed? The earth had decreed that they were an offense on the land and must be destroyed. And if the clan did not exact punishment for an offense against the great goddess, her wrath was loose on all the land and not just the offender. And that one's from chapter 13. Okay. Um, the villagers of Banta gave the missionaries the, uh, from the new Christian church the land in the evil forest. They call these Christian missionaries, some of whom the Ibu converts, um, and I have pronunciations over here, let's see, um, Ifu let, Lefu, Ifu Lefu, for which Ibu, uh, which is Ibu for worthless man. The young church in Banta had few crises early in its life. The clan was worried, but not overmuch. If a gang of um, Ifu Ilifu Lefu decided to live in the evil forest, it was their own affair. It was true they were rescuing twins from the bush, but they never brought them into the village. As far as the villagers were concerned, the twins still remained where they had been thrown away. Surely the earth goddess would not visit the sins of missionaries on innocent villagers. Okay, so we're going to analyze this document, and I, I, so again, we're going to answer the questions that are proposed to us. In the Ibu culture, what happens to twins? 
What do we be put for our answer there? And yes, I cannot pronounce half of those, the, all those, um, the African words in there. I am sorry about that. So if we grab our text box, we may need to move that up a little bit so that we can write it up here. What happens to twins? In the Ibu culture, what happens to twins? Okay. Okay, so I have, they're thrown into the forest, they're thrown into the forest, they're thrown into the forest. Okay, so you're half right. You're half right. They're thrown into the forest. What else is they done? What else is it? You're half right. They are thrown into the forest. Well, what's the what else is that? What else happens to them? What happens? They get thrown into earthenware pots. Yes, are thrown into earthenware pots. Okay, so that is the answer to that question. We can find that directly into, we find it directly in here, in our document, okay? It's not hidden anywhere, it's not a trick question, it's in our document, okay? All right, this one, some of these are very hard to answer because they are, are very hard to type in because they are very close together. We're gonna to have to make our font a little smaller to fit. So, okay. When Christian missionaries rescue the twins, how do villagers view their actions? What does the document tell us about that? When the Christian missionaries rescue the twins, how do the villagers view their actions? They thought they were just going to live in the forest. I thought they wouldn't let the twins get away. Okay. All right. Um, did they think it was a positive thing or a negative thing? Did they think they were, did they think that these Christian people were doing the right thing according to their culture? No. So were these Christian people, were these Christian missionaries creating a sin in their minds? Okay, yes. So, so in L essence, they, um, the villagers, Um, believed 
they were sinful. Um, and then what were they afraid of because the, these people were rescuing the twins? Okay, what's their God? Who is their God? The earth goddess, uh-huh. Ears are popping. Okay. So the villagers believed they were sinful and were afraid that the earth goddess would punish, punish the villagers for those sins. Okay. All right. So now, and we can probably make this one, I'll make this one a little bit bigger so we can see it. All right, why is this practice followed? In other words, what is the internal logic behind this practice? Try to use an if then statement in your response, okay? So why do you think that this was going on? Let's try to see if we can follow the instructions here using an if then statement. So let's answer the first part. Why is this practiced? Okay. Why is, what's their logic behind why this is practiced? Why is this done? Why are they doing this? Why do they believe that twins need to be put in the evil forest? Which, by the way, for my twins that are in our class, I don't agree with this at all. We have cool twins here. It's just a story. It's just a story. Just a story. I would never feel that way. Just a story. If they are put in the forest and the goddess would be happy, okay. Because Earth has decreed that twins are an offense. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, so. Yes, so the earth the earth has decreed that so the earth has decreed oops I'm not I'm, where am I typing? I'm not typing anywhere. I'm just typing in space. Okay. So the earth has decreed that twins are an offense. against the earth. This is not true. This is just a story. Okay. So now this is, so now we have to write our if then statement. Okay. So what would be our if then statement? So our if, if, so where's our if, if, so what would be their logic? What would be their logic? If this is, so if what? If they were born, okay. If 
twins were found. Okay. Okay, so I've got a few statements that are going on here, but so think about it this way. If, so when, if the community feels that they are all gonna be punished, if these twins, if twins are not given to the evil forest, then how how would we create that statement? Like like so if we have like the whole community believes that they're going to be punished, okay? And we know that because the when the Christian missionaries rescued the twins, the villagers were very very upset because they thought that the entire the entire mission, the entire village was going to be punished by the earth goddess, okay? So our if statement, our starting statement would be if the entire community would be punished for, having, for tolerating twins. Okay, that would be the first part of it. Okay, because they don't want to be punished. Okay, so the first part of it would be if the community or village. Oh, my ears are popping. Sorry, guys. Twins. Then then what? Then we have then then we have the idea that twins must be given to the forest, okay? To protect the community. You guys see how that works? So if the community is going to be punished for having twins, then the idea is that we have to give the twins away to the evil forest so that they won't be punished. You see how that works? Hello, I see lots of walls and tops of heads, but I don't see any one of those heads moving. Okay. <laughs> it's Friday, is everyone getting tired? I saw a couple of people actually shake their head no. I'm exhausted, Ms. Claus. You're exhausted? <laughs> Ready for the weekend. This right here, this writing response number one, uh, you don't need to worry about this for right now. Um, I want you to focus on analyzing your work, analyzing the documents. Okay. The writing responses that are on here. Um, I want you to worry about those, okay? Everybody got that? Yeah. Okay. I also want you to complete the, and we're not gonna do every single one of them together because I, because you know, we don't do that. But I also want you to complete this for each of the documents. Now, 
the last time I kind of went easy on you all in regards to this little document. But here's the thing. I expect you all to go into detail. I expect you all to give me good sentences, good feedback on these documents, good summaries, good information, not one sentence thing or I don't know. If I see anything that says I don't know, I'm going to give you a zero. Okay. So um, just try guys, just try. Yeah, because that tells me you're not trying. If you just say I don't know. Because if you don't know, then you need to ask me or ask Ms. Pierce, period. I mean, that's just the truth. If you don't know, then ask. Um, the DBQ question is on the background essay. So let's see, let me use my background essay. Uh, Well, where did it go? Let's see. Hang on a second. Where did it go? So when you went to understanding the task, so it was right here, this right here. Explains it right here. This asks you to think and write both logically and creative as you enter the understanding of the culture. Okay. So you're going to talk, you're going into understanding the culture of the, the Ibu culture. Okay. So when it gives you, it may not be an actual question that's being asked here. But what you're doing here is you're going back and talking about the culture itself. You're talking about, you're describing how they lived and what they did and things like that. So there's not an actual question like we had in the outsiders when we said, who are the outsiders? You know, um, but this is about a task that you are given where you are going to describe and explain things. Okay, does that make sense? Yes, everybody. So when you do your buckets, when you do your buckets, okay? So you'll notice on the slides where it says response one, two, three, and four, okay? Those are your choices. There's no right or wrong answers there. Those are your choices. You are deciding what pieces of their culture you are going to put in those buckets, okay? You are deciding, remember the buckets. What are the buckets? What are the buckets for? What are the buckets for? To make groups of what you're gonna talk about. Absolutely right. Make groups of what you're gonna talk about, okay? So that's what you, that's what, those are the topics you're gonna to focus on in your essay. Those are your bucket topics, okay? So, which means in this particular essay, you're gonna have four, right? You're gonna have four topics because you've got four buckets, right? Okay, all right. So, um, and again, here's the, here's the overview of what, what you need to work on. And I know a lot of you have not finished this part, this, this activity yet. It's really important that you, that you understand what you need to do here, okay? And that you are describing in your own words what you need to do for this task, okay? Um, let's see. Um, let me go over here. Have I missed anything for classroom? Oh, yes. All right. This right here. All right. Again, please make sure that, like I said, full sentences, good descriptions, inferences. You can make inferences about things. Okay. Inferences are your guesses. All right. Please don't say, I can't make any. If you say you can't make any, then, I mean, then you need to talk to us. You need to come see me or you need to email me, okay? 
You can make inferences about anything. You just have to put forth this much effort. All right. Some of you didn't even try last time, and I know that you didn't because I, but I was easy on you last time. This time I'm not going to be. Okay. Because you've had one time to kind of get used to what we're doing here. All right. I expect you to put forth more effort this time. Does that make sense? Okay. Do we need to have uh, some time to go over this more? Or you, I think I think most of you did pretty well on it, but there were a few of you who just didn't put forth effort. And I don't know if it's just because you didn't understand it or because you just didn't do it. But you need to make a copy of this and do it um, and make one for each document. So you should have, when you are done, you should have one for document A, one for document B, one for C, one for D, okay? And then you also need to complete this as part of your document analysis. So you should have how many of these? Four, four. Okay, all right, any questions on anything? These are all due by Tuesday. Stuff is due by Tuesday, our next class. Okay, all right, if you need help, please email me. Again, I ask you do not struggle in silence. I beg you, do not struggle in silence. I know that we always go through all this stuff really fast because we never seem to have enough time. And I wish that we were together so that we could talk about things. If you need to come up and work with me, please do that. I have some times available next week that I've got people coming up. If you want to come up and work with me, please let me know. Um, I will be happy to do that and we can work together, okay? Um, you can come hang out in my room and I will cord you off from everybody and you will not be around other people, all right? Um, I do the same thing, guys. We will seriously let the office know that you're coming you let us know when you're at the side door. We let you in when students aren't in the hallways. You do not see, or you're not like mashed in with a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've already got people coming up next week on Monday, um, starting Monday. Uh, so if you if you all want to come up, please send me an email. Okay, and we will get you up here. Okay. Uh, so starting Monday afternoon, I've got people coming up here to hang out with me, and we will work on some stuff, and we will get you taken care of. But you just gotta send me an email and let me know, okay? Um, so, but other than that, guys, uh, I am done for the day. And um, but uh, hope y'all have a great weekend, and I will see you all later. Bye. Bye, y'all. Have a good weekend.